Hello, Luminary. It is Leslie Tagorda with another episode of The Savvy Luminary, Astrology for Entrepreneurs. Well, this episode is all about our upcoming super full moon in Sagittarius and how it's really a culmination of things that really started way back for you in December of 2020. So in today's episode, I'm going to share a little bit about the full moon and its meaning and what to do with it in your life and your work. We're going to reflect on the astrology around this full moon. And then we're going to explore a few journal illuminations so you can reveal some limiting self-beliefs that might be taking hold on you from expressing your truest freedom. Lastly, if you listen all the way to the end, I have a flash full moon bonus if you've been interested in Star Powered Summer, my upcoming summer fun experience. Before we dive into all about the full moon, I wanted to share with you a few shifts that are coming for this podcast. For those that have been listening since the beginning, oh my goodness, thank you so much. And for those of you that might have just recently found me, thank you too. I enjoy speaking to astrology and getting into your ear and sharing all of this wonderful astro wisdom. Now, you might have heard a couple of shifts, you know, through my burnout season, and it's so apropos that I am recording this on June 13th because my rising sign is at 22 degrees of Gemini, and the sun literally just crossed over that my ascendant, that Gemini of 22 degrees, really sparking this emergence, this kind of like a rebirth. Anytime your sun passes your ascendant or your rising sign, that degree mark, when the sun makes its tra- that traversal across that rising sign, you might feel this burst of energy, kind of like a, a birthday, because that's really what it is. It's like a rebirth day every time the sun crosses that rising sign once a year. And so it's kind of apropos that I'm sharing this with you now. Part of the downtime that I had, that intentional downtime that I took during my burnout earlier this year, I had some really big insights in terms of what this work, the work of astrology and entrepreneurship, what it really boiled down to, because I've noticed that a lot of my people that are in my community that love working with astrology don't necessarily identify as entrepreneurs. They may be executive directors for a nonprofit, or they might have a job um, in a managerial role doing something really, really important and purposeful purposeful for them. And so I wanted to shift this astrology and this astro wisdom more from just focus purely on our businesses, but focusing on our change making work. So over the next few weeks, few months, I'll be slowly shifting. I'm going to be announcing a new podcast name. You know, I have Saturn in the first house, so I tend to be really long winded. I'm not really so it takes a lot of effort for me to write and speak in concise snapshots and part of that long-windedness Saturn thank you Saturn is that my writing style is really long and the savvy luminary while a wonderful title I've kind of grown out of it I want something that is much shorter and snappier and so to fit this evolution and this re-emergence I'll be shifting this podcast from not just focusing on a sh- on entrepreneurs, but also focusing on change makers. I'll be shifting. And so you'll start to notice the transition. I'll have a new intro. I'm going to come out with new introductory posts just to explain who I am and my perspective of astrology and how I got there over the coming weeks. So stay tuned and hear all about how I'm shifting and transitioning from the brand, The Savvy Luminary for this podcast and shifting into Star Powered, Astrology for Changemakers. I'm so excited and you're the first to hear. 
All right, so let's talk about this full moon, this super full moon in Sagittarius. Super full moon in Sagittarius happens at 23 degrees of Sagittarius, while the sun is at Gemini of 23 degrees, and this happens on June 14th, 4.51 a.m. Pacific, 7.51 a.m. Eastern. So if you're living on the East Coast, if you're waking up just as the sun rises, as you see that moon kind of lift over that Eastern horizon, you are going to see a beautiful, glorious strawberry moon. Um, lots of different cultures, um, especially indigenous American cultures and the farmer, Farmer's Almanac have coined this full moon that happens in June, the strawberry full moon, because the strawberries, those little heart berries are blooming and are getting ready to be harvested, especially if they're wild. And if you are at the grocery store, you probably see a huge plethora, an abundance of beautiful strawberries. And so it's really time to um, celebrate this full blossom blossoming. And in Sagittarius, this full moon is really all about belief, right? Sagittarius, of course, is about exploration and vision and purpose and ethics, really getting to your own morality. Of course, the shadows of this vision, purpose, and shadow, this truth can, we've seen this already starting to erupt in, in terms of like bigotry. And this, I, this, this falsity, I guess, of truth, where people believe that there is supremacy, that one person is better than another, that is not the high light of Sagittarius. That is such a low light. And this Sagittarius full moon, what it's doing for us on a personal, at personal and a work level is really illuminating our sense of freedom that is based to our ability to explore where we want, to create a vision of our future, to live a purposeful life, and to live into our honest truth. It's so beautiful that this Sagittarius full moon always happens during pride season, where we are celebrating what it is to be a true person, to be in truth to ourselves and living and celebrating in that diversity. And this full moon, the Sagittarius full moon is illuminating. A full moon for all full moons, it's where the sun and the moon are sitting across each other from the sky. And the moon looks beautiful white, not because it has its own light source, but because it's reflecting the sun in all of its glory. So there's this beautiful illumination. And just like when you use a spotlight or the flashlight on your phone, you get to see something in bright light so does the full moon allow us to gain a new perspective, a fully illuminated perspective, so we can decide. Remember in astrology, an opposition is opposing forces that are pulling away from each other. Um, we can learn how to integrate and balance those forces by coming together and meeting at a midway point or we can decide and choose by cutting off one and committing to the other. And so in our life and our work, we are using this kind of illumination process to make decisions on where we want to be. Are we, are we accomplishing what we said that we were going to do? Are we living the life that we want to? Are we working in our own authority and our own accountability? And with Sagittarius, when we are reflecting, it's really about our beliefs in ourselves. Are we believing in ourselves to be able to charge what we are worth? Are we believing in ourselves to not overgive? Are we believing in ourselves so that we're not underestimating ourselves? All Sagittarius themes. So of course, if you are someone that does full moon rituals and I hope that you are. A full moon ritual is about illuminating and gaining perspective, seeing what needs to be released and let go, and what needs to be kept and cultivated and appreciated. So there's this idea, again, opposing forces of let go 
or celebrate. And that is that wonderful full moon meaning. If we're thinking about a harvest cycle, the full moon phase is right before that harvest phase, right before things are coming to fruition, where you're looking at a beautiful peach tree or a beautiful apple tree, and it's not yet about to harvest, but you see where you have to prune off all of the little extra extra fruit that might be small or extra fruit that isn't growing in the right way so that we can make room for more fruition. And so when in our work and in our lives and in our businesses, it's really important to remember to take this full moon time to reflect, to see if we are going where we want to go or if there's any dead weight that's hanging around that we can choose to prune. So let's talk about this super full moon in Sagittarius. And yes, you heard that right. It is a super full moon. And anytime we hear about a super full moon or a super new moon, all that means is that the moon is at its closest to Earth in its orbit. So we get the super moon. So that's why if we're going to look at the moon and gaze at it tonight, it's going to appear a little bit closer and our emotions are going to run a little bit higher. So in the Savvy Luminary, my free Facebook group, and the, that name will be shifting too, and I'll, I'll let you know when that happens. Um, I asked the members in that group if anybody had any questions about this upcoming super full moon. And they just asked the most wonderful questions. I just love these questions because what I want to talk about today is, yes, the astrology of this particular full moon, but how the astrology of this full moon illumination is really not only integrating our recent Mercury retrograde, which Mercury just returned to Gemini um, early this morning, now that it's moving forward, it's still in its shadow zone, integrating the Saturn retrograde cycle that we just began about a week ago, but also integrating the eclipse energy that began 18 months ago in December of 2020. <laughs> I don't mean to re-traumatize you, but just thinking of how far we've come from that December 2020 total eclipse that happened at 23 of Sagittarius. Yes, you got that. The exact same degree. We had a new moon total solar eclipse on December 14th, 2020 at Sagittarius, 23 degrees. And now we have a full moon, a super full moon in Sagittarius, 23 degrees. Are they connected? You bet they are. So let's talk about this full moon a little bit. In, um, in the book that I wrote with Natalie Miller at the beginning of the year, New and Full Moon Rituals for Entrepreneurs and Changemakers, see, I have a lot of words. That was a mouthful. I'm working on that. Trust me, I'm working on that. But in that book, Natalie and I co-wrote, and we wrote this, um, this little snapshot of this full moon. This full moon invites us to reflect back into the heart of the eclipse season of 2020, when there was a total solar eclipse at the same degree of Sagittarius. So I invite you to look back at your calendar, your journal, your emails, to see what was emerging for you around December 14, 2020. Gosh, can you just remember, like, just go back in time. It was we didn't yet all have access to um, vaccines. Things were still really clamped down. There was still so much fear. There was a lot going astrologically at that end of 2020. It was right before the Jupiter-Saturn conjunction in Aquarius. There were so many shakeups going. It was like a really big start and a transition time. And we all felt it, like every single person on earth felt it. And so now it's time to celebrate how far you have come in those 18 months. Applaud the ways in which you've created a new paradigm and adopted a new belief system for yourself. Appreciate meaning, give more power and value to the ways in which you've broken free from a limited and limiting self-concept. At the same time, Mars conjunct Chiron pokes you to notice anything that remains of your old doubts and fears. It is time to sever any last ties to limiting beliefs that make you overgive, overshare, and underprice or underestimate yourself. I want to put a little bit of emphasis on that underestimation. We are so good at underestimating ourselves and Sagittarius and Jupiter energy asks us, where are you underestimating yourself? 
And with the sun trining Saturn, it's the perfect time to articulate better boundaries and more self-honoring policies. Moon square Neptunes ask you to lean into self-compassion and connection with spirit as you do so. Your creative integrity depends on deep honoring of the interconnectedness of mind and body and soul. Ah, that's so beautifully written. That's an excerpt from um, the full moon reading in our book that I co-wrote with Natalie Miller. And so this full moon, it just, it feels so visionary. You know, I'm a Sagittarius moon and, and this full moon is happening right on my ascendant descendant axes. So I feel super, super, super energized. And so when we think about beliefs, you already know is that what you can believe in yourself, what you can believe as a possibility, you know that you can create that for yourself. You know that you can manifest it. Now, sometimes the difference between success or failure or perceived success and perceived failure is simply believing that you were successful or simply believing that you are never going to be successful, right? I know I've explored this so many times because I can see a con a a direct connection on the things that I think are possible and the things that I don't think are possible in terms of like whether I'm going to achieve that possibility. And one, like just one-to-one, -one, it's always exactly perfect. If, if I can believe and see in a possibility, I always get what I go after. So this super full moon, you're really going to use these reflections to work on your belief set. Are you believing in yourself or are your belief systems kind of stuck and there's places where you get to let go? So I want you to look at a couple of different things as you reveal what belief systems need to shift in yourself. Number one, you can use these journaling questions and I'll be sending out an email that uh, to all my subscribers that will have these journaling questions. So no need to write them down if you are already a subscriber. First, we'll take a look at the questions and then we'll be looking at your personalizations of your natal chart so that you can kind of see where are your limiting self-beliefs? Where are that, where is that root that needs to be illuminated right now? Okay, so question number one, how far have you come? Remember I mentioned that that new moon solar eclipse that happened in December of 2020 at that same degree? Well, they are connected. And just like in the Savvy Luminary, Christy asked, how are we integrating that Saturn retrograde? And Elena asked, how are we integrating the recent Mercury retrograde? All of these cycles are, of course, being illuminated with this full super moon. So that total solar eclipse back in December of 2020, you probably had flashes of dreams and visions and just setting yourself free to explore after being trapped for six, six months with the beginning of the pandemic. Lots of things shifted. Your life really contracted. With this last Mercury retrograde, you had much more clarity on your perspective and your point of view on how you needed to open up your voice and maybe how you needed to let spirit speak through you. And that Saturn retrograde was showing you where you need, where we need to come recommit to, where we need to reestablish our own energetic boundaries and our own authority. And so the first question, how far have you come? I want you to look back over the last 18 months. I want you to look back at how you have shifted, how you've gotten more sure of yourself, how you've started to trust your voice and trust the downloads and information that comes from spirit, okay? Number two, are you connecting to your truth and your freedom? So this question comes from the full moon conjunct the galactic center. So the galactic center is at Sagittarius at 27 degrees. It moves like a degree every 72 years. And this galactic center, what it is, is the middle of our, our galaxy, the Milky Way. 
right? So if the middle of our solar system is our sun, the sun now revolves around the galactic center. And it is said that the galactic center is where we receive our divine guidance. And so this full moon, this illumination at the galactic center is saying, are you connecting to your truth that is part of your divine guidance? Are you connecting to your truth that sees you as a sovereign, free soul? Or are you somehow or are you somehow still holding yourself back in some kind of shackles? Or what parts of the system are really holding you back? So are you connecting to your truth and your freedom thanks to the galactic center? Now, the sun-moon opposition is T-squaring Neptune, and so Neptune is acting as a kind of the leverage point of a seesaw, and they inspire the third question. Are you leveraging your self-compassion and spirit? So, of course, coming back to these spiritual soul questions, self-compassion, interconnectedness, soul, soul connection, empathy, vision, blending into oneness, all very Neptunian. And so this, um, this belief system of this full moon that is being illuminated is saying, are you leveraging your own inner compassion and your own access to spirit? Now, fourth question for reflection. What are you saying no to so you can say yes to your truth? This comes from Sun trining Saturn retrograde, okay? We're practicing saying no. We're practicing setting boundaries. We're practicing committing to the things that bring us the most joy, the most bliss, the most results. That's your freedom. That's your truth. That's your yes. And so Sun trine Saturn asks you, what are you saying no to so you can say yes to your truth? And the fifth question, the last one here for our journal reflection questions, what fears keep you underestimating yourself? That's thanks to Mars and Chiron rubbing up against each other. Mars and Chiron will peak at their meetup on Wednesday, the 15th, but you've likely already been feeling this. Mars activates. Chiron are the wounds that we may never be able to heal in ourselves, but we're supposed to heal in others. And so you might feel that activating and you might be feeling, ah, oh, this isn't worth anything. And that's just truly your fears holding you back because it is that Chiron wound that is your ultimate gift, this what you are meant to offer back into the world. And so Mars and Chiron, if you've been feeling fears or anxiety or frustration, get curious with what those fears keep whispering in your ear that keep you trapped in underestimating yourself because it's in those fears are the keys to unlock that. So as you reflect on these five questions, I hope that you are able to connect the dots between some limiting self-belief patterns so that you can release the doubt and heal your own belief. Because I believe in you, now you must believe in yourself. And when you believe in yourself, you are truly free. Okay. So after you take a look at your, your journaling and your reflections around belief, you can also connect the dots to your astrological chart. Now, there's a lot of things going on in this full moon that those journaling questions inspired, but the easiest way to personalize your full moon and discover some insight as to what needs celebration and letting go is to look at the axes, the houses that live on opposite ends of each other on your birth chart at that Sagittarius of 23 degree mark and Gemini 23 degree mark. So again, th these will be living on a polarity, a polar axis, 23 degrees of Sagittarius and Gemini. Now, if all of that really confused you, I have a mini course called Written in the Stars that teaches you how to find these degrees on your chart, teaches you what those polarities mean, teaches you about the houses and all that means. So if you want to grab that course, you can grab that at my website, The Savvy Luminary. All right, so now let's take a look at those house polarities and see where you aren't believing in your 
dot, 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 fill in the blanks. So if your 23 degrees of Sagittarius and Gemini live in the first house, seventh house polarity, just like me, it's right on my angles of my, um, my rising and my descendant. And this is where you're looking at your sense of belief in yourself and relationships. Do you believe in yourself? Do you believe in others to support you in relationship? What are your beliefs there? Maybe you don't trust yourself. Maybe you don't trust the people in your relationships. Maybe you feel completely unsupported. Take a look if you have um, Gemini and Sagittarius at 23 degrees at that first house, seventh house axes. Now, if that degree is in the second house and eighth house axes, you're looking at your belief set around your worthiness and intimate trust. Of course, this comes down to your money house in the second house and your alchemical spiritual money in the eighth house, which is really bringing up, do you believe and trust that the world is here to take care of your needs, that you will always have what you need to survive and thrive, that you know what your values are, that you are valuable. So explore your belief mindset around worthiness and trust. If you are activating this third house, ninth house axes for this full moon, this is about believing in your ideas and your vision. Third house ideas, sharing ideas, your closest community, the ninth house, your vision, your philosophy, your higher learning. And so do you believe in your ability to communicate to your ideas? Do you believe in your ability to craft an expansive vision for yourself? And so explore those ideas around belief if this is your full moon activation. Now, if the full moon is activating your fourth house, 10th house axes, this is about your ancestry, fourth house, and your legacy. Do you believe in your ancestry and the wisdom that you were given through your roots? And not only is there going to be wisdom that comes up in your ancestry, but there's going to be some stories that you've inherited that may or may not be yours anymore. And so really exploring what's coming up for you from your ancestry, from your past generations, from your family. You may be holding on to something that isn't yours, that is blocking you from really going after your true legacy, legacy in the 10th house, your public sphere, what you're meant to leave behind, right? This is going into the future, your more than your contribution, your ultimate mission, and your reputation. So wondering and getting curious about your belief set around your ancestry and your future forward legacy. If this full moon is activating your fifth house and your 11th house, this is about believing in your creativity and your contribution. Your creativity in your fifth house, the love and the play and the joy of your children and your inner child, and the contribution to society in the 11th house, your social impact with your friends and the people that you draw through for from aligned social values right? So start to look at that if you have that being activated. Lastly, if you have your sixth house, 12th house being activated for this full moon, you are here to illuminate where are you not believing in your work and your bliss. Yes, work for sixth house, our effectiveness, our service to others, our health and our routines. And of course, the 12th house, bliss, reformation, soul work, dream work. And so do you believe that you don't always have to be working hard? Do you believe that you can restore and that you have access to health, that you have access to soul work and bliss? If this is sparking for you, take a look if you have that full moon activating that area of your chart. Ah, so that's what I have for you all about the summer, um, the summer super full moon. But I wanted to let you in on what I have announced on my email and on social media. I let you know that the last um, podcast episode that I had opened up a wait list. And if you were on that wait list, you received an invitation to Star Powered Summer. Oh my goodness. I am just 
just shook with joy <laughs> about this summer fun experience. So if you're like me, maybe you've just gone through some burnout, you've been working too hard, fun is a priority this summer. And a good time sounds like making friends, cozying up with a book, and learning more about astrology. So if you're a change maker looking to be inspired by the stars and powering up your own star power, the doors are now open to join Star Powered Summer. And if you, if you sign up right now, I have a couple of bonuses for you. So as we are in this full moon phase, if you sign up before June 14th, midnight Pacific time, I am going to gift you with a bonus solstice astro brand mini reading. I normally do these mini readings for new moons, but this solstice is really sparking the I am. There's so much, even though it's a cancer, it's cardinal cancer there's so much Aries in there and this idea of sparking your inner summer your inner fun your inner attraction by getting to the root of I am that is so empowered that it magnetizes all that is for you so I'm going to be offering for everyone who signs up before June 14th midnight pacific a bonus solstice astrobrand mini reading with me I deliver these on loom and these mini Many readings are mighty and potent. So if you want to take a look at what's all included in Star Powered Summer, you can get the details at thesavvyluminary.com forward slash summer. So let me tell you a little bit more about Star Powered Summer, because that solstice reading isn't the only bonus that's going on. So Star Powered Summer, when you think of summers as a youth, what do you remember? I remember lazy days, relaxing at the book at the beach with the book, having starlit conversations with my besties, and picking up new skills just for fun. Summer was a magical time where I was allowed to simply be. Now, why can't we have that now now that we're grown up? Well, we can. So what I've done is I've taken my absolute favorite things, which are sacred new moon ceremonies or just sacred ceremonies with my besties. I've taken book club and I've taken astrology. So astrology camp. So imagine all of that combined in a summer experience where we'll be meeting weekly, either for a ceremony. We have three ceremonies. We have our solstice ceremony, which will be co-hosted with Asher Frost, Indigenous Medicine Woman. She will be opening up the ceremony with visionary healing. Then we'll have our Cancer New Moon Ritual, which will be co-hosted with Jordan Maney, who is a Radical Joy Coach. She'll be exploring with us radical self-care. And then we'll be closing out our summer session together with the Leo New Moon Ritual, who we will be joined with Sharon Escondani, who is a life alchemist of wholehearted coaching. And she will be guiding us on revolutionary joy, rest, joy, healing, like, yeah. <laughs> and in the middle of these ceremonies, we are going to be exploring the future of post-capitalistic work. Because, you know, I often find myself asking, why is this world so effed up? How can we heal the socioeconomic and environmental injustices that we hear about in the news without feeling hopeless at the same time? How do we create the future of work and capital without replicating the predatory colonial business models in so many online spaces run by folks who claim to be woke? I don't know about that. So I'd like to explore all of these questions so that we can start to change our work, to change our business models in this book by this amazing um, author, Alice Sparkly Cat. The book is called Post-Colonial Astrology. And she asks the question, if astrology is a language, who wrote the language? <laughs> So she explores the seven traditional planets through a new lens. They explore the seven traditional planets through a new lens, taking away gendered experiences and redefining capital, power, 
and labor. So each week we'll be exploring one of those um, subjects, those topics, capital, power, and labor. And we'll be having a pop-up community. I'm still deciding where I'm going to host this community of all the like-minded people that will be joining, Astro Curious Change Makers, where we will get to network and support each other and befriend each other and just share all of our change making ideas. I am so stoked for this offer. So I hope you are excited and want to grab that bonus of that solstice reading. And if also, if you sign up by then, you I will send you, if you sign up by, um, actually a little bit later, if you sign up by the 17th, June 17th, I will send you your version of, uh, your copy of um, Alice Sparkly Cat's book, Post-Colonial Astrology. And lastly, if you are a listener who hasn't yet experienced their first Saturn return, I have an application on that summer page where you can apply for a 50% scholarship um, for this summer experience for all my pre-1993 luminaries. Okay. I know that was a lot. If you're still listening, (laughs) thank you for listening to me babble all this way. I just had so much to share with you. So first things first, have an amazing full moon. I hope you find the root of your self, your limiting self-beliefs and open yourself up to all of your beliefs so you can grab your possibilities. And I hope you consider joining me with Star Powered Summer. I have that full moon bonus just for you. So sign up before our full moon phase ends, June 14th, Pacific, midnight. Sign up by then and you get your free mini solstice reading from me. (laughs) Yep, from me, Leslie Tagorda. So thank you again for listening. It's been such a joy. I will talk to you soon. If you love this podcast, please consider doing me a favor and heading over to Apple iTunes and leaving me a rating and review. Your rating and review helps this humble podcast get seen and found by more listeners like you. Please share the love.